Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Linfield Coaches Cat Chat. Joe Stewart here with head Linfield swimming coach Kyle Kimball. Coach, how are you doing today? Great, Joe. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Well, we're always glad to talk to you, and, and uh, try to, but a lot of scheduling <laughs> snafus uh, these last couple of weeks with some crazy weather in the region. Of course, affected your team's schedule quite a bit, um, but back, got to be able to get back in the pool for some real competition for the first time in a while this uh-huh. last weekend. Um, had to imagine that felt good for everybody just to be racing again, but a couple of wins against George Fox and PLU both on the road. Uh, what were the big takeaways there, and, and what were the vibes after actually getting to get some competition? in for the first time in over a month yeah it's definitely good to be back uh racing i told our team like these next couple weeks are pretty much the most important of our whole season we've done a lot of training uh we haven't raced in a month and a half so uh it was good it's always hard to to come off of not we haven't been taking a break by any means we've been doing a lot of training but to get on the bus and go up to tacoma race at night come back and then go you know up to george fox the next morning it's it's challenging for them but it's good because not only are we getting on the blocks and and competing against another team uh we're kind of getting the mindset of that's what we have to do at conference too with the preliminary preliminaries and then the finals every day coming back that next morning uh you got to be ready so it's it's good practice this is kind of the culmination of our, our of our training portion of the season and um it was great to get back and, and race and good to get some wins. Um, you know, I think all the teams are pretty bunched up in the conference. So all the meets, uh, I think, throughout the conference have been pretty tight. So it's it's good. Good fun. Good test for, obviously, the big stage in Tacoma in a, in a few weeks for conference championships. Yeah. But, uh, of course, uh, back at the end of winter break, uh, going into January, you guys had your big uh, annual training trip this year going down to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, tell us about that, and what does that do for the team just as far as, as bonding and, and both the physical training? Yeah, I think just being away from campus, being away from, um, you know, their academic rigors uh it's good to just be on our own and kind of like you said bond a little bit uh i think you know being in new mexico that was something new for me my 10th season here we hadn't gone to new mexico yet the host in new mexico state was absolutely incredible uh facilities were really great um swimming outside getting a little sun uh, it wasn't hot by any means. We've gone to Hawaii before. We've gone to San Diego. So we've had some a little bit warmer weather in the past on these winter training trips. But just it, the training, the mindset, the bonding of the team, it's, it's really key. I call it a springboard for the rest of the season. Um, people start to feel like, hey, we're fit, we're strong. Um, and then we get to have some fun, too. We did a couple hikes. Uh, we went out to White, White Sands National Monument. Um, you know, just to do things as a team, I think brings us all together. It, swimming is a is it's an individual sport, but we're a team, and and we're all uh, gonna support each other at the end, and and uh, so it's good to to gel and to to have these trips. Sure, and of course, uh, I'm sure this year, as much as any year, with I mean, you guys have kind of had a target on your back this season. Of course, the women's team coming off the conference championship last year, and, and the men finishing top three. I mean, the expectations were high. Other teams know that it's going to be a tough race coming in every time what have you guys been doing to kind of both meet and manage just those expectations throughout the year yeah I mean definitely definitely a good thing to have good expectations and and uh you know expect ourselves to to do well um we've had a lot of people step up uh we've had some we've had some challenges this season we've had some some injuries we've had definitely sickness and i know every you know team and in every sport has that but uh, we've had to manage some challenges along with the target on our back a little bit and uh, i think that you know it took us a while to kind of get there this season and and now i really feel like everything's kind of coming together at the right time so i'm excited i told our team you know, I'm I'm really excited for the next three weeks. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun ride. It's gonna be, um, you know, something that we feel I think confident about doing these next three weeks because of what we've done and what we've gone through and and how hard we've trained. And I feel like we're in really good shape and just gonna kind of fine tune some things over the next three weeks and and uh, like I said, have some fun and and do well. 
Let's talk about a little bit of uh, some individual standouts this year. Eden Donaldson, I mean, you knew he was going to be one of your top guys on the men's side coming in, and he's got top sprint times in, in several events across the NWC this year. What have you been seeing out of him here, kind of peaking in his season? Yeah, I mean, just a little different season for him. I mean, he's been here for a while, um, you know, using up his, his COVID year this year, um, which well-deserved as everybody who went through the COVID time period as he walks in here right now. But, um, you know, I think it's it's just been a, a good thing for him to just kind of have a little bit of weight of being a team leader off his back. He, he's just – we we don't have our COVID people or our COVID fifth-year people be, be captains. And so I think he's got to – focus a little bit on himself obviously a team leader obviously leads you know by example off the blocks uh on a daily basis but um it's been fun to see him just be able to be here because he really wants to be here and 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 meet his challenges that he has for himself so it's it's been a fun ride and i think all of our guys get to look up to him and um you know he's one of the the grandfathers of the team so he's (laughs) He's, uh, he's been a great influence on the rest of the team, for sure. On the women's side, Kirstie Kepo, just a sophomore, and obviously we saw what she could do last year as a freshman <clears> taking <throat> conference titles. And, and, and But she has just continued to kind of set the bar for distance in the conference. What's led to so much success for her early in her career like this? Yeah, I think, I think the difference between what she is at a, as an athlete now versus what she was in high school is just confidence getting to swim with not only the rest of our women's team, which is obviously very strong. Like you could pick out numerous people on our women's side that are, that are ranked, you know, in the top three in our conference. And, and she's definitely one of them, definitely a leader in practice, uh, gets to go against, you know, our guys in practice and stuff. So I think just the confidence that she's got on a daily basis has led to her making huge strides when we get to races, uh, you know, as far as comparing what she is now to, to what she was in high school, which was very good swimmer already, but um, just she's she's strong, she's fit. She did a lot of work in the summer com- coming in, uh, you know, even after winning the conference title in the mile last year. So uh, it's been fun to see her and see what she's able to do on a daily basis in the water. And, and it's just like the rest of the team, it's going to, you know, come to fruition here in the next three weeks with with all the things and all the confidence she's gotten throughout the season it's going to be fun to see what she does and at the conference championships you mentioned the last few weeks uh, kind of being a springboard for this stretch run is there anybody else that uh, we, that you've uh, seen kind of progressing quite well lately that you think could really pick it up and, and, and be relevant down uh, down the stretch here you know we're we're a smaller team on both sides as far as our numbers but just that has brought us i think a little bit closer and i think you know we're there's so many i could name so many kids on on both sides of, of the of our squads the men and the women that that have become leaders but i think the the cool thing is is you We've had Eden, we've had Kirsty, we've had Sarah and Avery and, and a bunch of others that are that are leaders. But the new new crop coming in has been able to to look up to those people and kind of rise to their level. And I think that's going to help a lot in the next couple of weeks. So senior day coming up on Friday against Lewis and Clark. That'll be at six o'clock here in McMinnville. Uh, Twelve seniors in this class sizable group. Obviously, a couple fifth years in there as well. Six yep. on both sides for the men and the women. Talk about this class and kind of their contributions to the program. You know, it's every year is kind of rough for me as far as saying goodbye to our seniors and seeing them experience their last competition here at our pool at our home venue. So um, I think it's a really cool tradition that we get to, you know, honor our seniors. Um, but this year's class is is somewhat special. I mean, obviously, they're a huge part of why we won the conference title um, last year for the women's side. The guys have been top three pretty much every season. Um, you know, the fifth year kids coming back and, and being leaders, um, it's it, they have all gone through just the weirdest time of, of what at least their little lives right? right so they're this covid period it was really really strange the freshmen that you know the seniors right now when they were freshmen they came in and we only were able to have six people in the water at one time and uh even i mean that was like 
joyful to even have that many we were closed down for a long time and you know they were wearing masks and in their rooms by themselves and so they just have gone through so much and you know this class in particular uh has stood out to me as the the people that have persevered and and kept going and and rose to the challenges and obviously been really successful at the same time so it's it's going to be hard to say goodbye to them for sure certainly an impressive run over the years for, for this group wildcats will be wrapping up the season this friday night at home against lewis and clark six o'clock the start time there final time to catch the wildcats here at home for the season and just a few weeks away from conference championships but again senior night on friday night won't want to miss it and we'll of course have live streaming coverage on the linfield sports network coach thanks for the time thanks joe appreciate it